do you want to, um, Joseph, tell us about some related legislation that if it passes, Marcus will be there to enforce? Yes, um, I, I wish that we didn't have to talk about it, but, uh, but we do, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words about um, what the, those who have introduced this legislation are calling the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, which um, is something that if it's passed, it'll give Marcus even more power to silence advocacy for Palestinian rights on college campuses. Uh, and like I said, it's an incredibly deceptive name because it's not actually about, about anti-Semitism. Um, it, it's about trying to silence students. Um, you know, and, I, 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 and, and, and personally, I mean, I, I, I'm, I am deeply concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism in this country that um, we are continuing to see. You know, that was on display at, at the white nationalist um, rally in, in Charlottesville, but then also it seemed to be anti-Semitism seemed to be a big motivation for the shooter um, in Parkland, Florida, the school in Parkland, Florida. And we've seen Donald Trump put bigots and anti-Semites in positions of power in the White House. So, you know, we, ha we have, um, and have always had a serious anti-Semitism problem that needs to be confronted. Um, that being said, this legislation will do nothing to address that. And if anything, will make it more difficult to actually address real anti-Semitism. And that's because this legislation is aimed at trying to silence students who are advocating for Palestinian rights. Um, and so it would divert attention from real anti-Semitism and instead target college students. Um, and so the way that it does that is it takes this definition that, that you mentioned earlier, Liz, um, that conflates uh, anti-Semitism and then criticism of Israel, right? It's a definition which says that criticizing Israel or advocating for Palestinian rights is anti-Semitic. Uh, and what it says is that the Department of Education has to use that to judge whether or not anti-Semitism is taking place on a college campus. And so if this legislation were to pass, um, this definition would then, would then be used uh, that, and Marcus would really use this definition to pressure universities to investigate, uh, defund or discipline students or professors or academic programs who are critical of, of Israeli government policy. Um, and, you know, I, I think what we're really concerned about is with Marcus in, and especially with this legislation, if it were to pass, is just uh, a chilling effect like we've never really seen on, on legitimate and constitutionally protected speech on college campuses. And so can you tell us kind of where the bill is now and what, what we're going to do about it? Yes. Um, so the, the good news is that this legislation was introduced in the previous Congress, the 114th Congress. So at the end of, at the end of that session, um, at the end of 2016, it was introduced and we succeeded in stopping it from becoming law then. Which, which makes me believe that we can stop it from becoming law now. Um, so it was introduced uh, a number of weeks ago, um, but when it, was, when it was introduced the first time in the 114th Congress, um, it was passed through the Senate under kind of sneakily, I think we'll say, <laughs> it was kind of sneakily passed through the Senate, um, shady circumstances. I don't think anyone ever read it. There was like a really short notice, they introduced it and then just, put it up for, for what's called a unanimous consent vote. And um, it's basically not clear to me that anyone actually wrote it. What'd you say? Basically in the dark of night. Basically in the dark of night. I mean, it's, just, it's basically exactly what happened. Um, and senators had no idea what they were voting on. They saw anti-Semitism in the title and said, oh, we, yeah, we're against anti-Semitism, we'll vote for that. Um, and so it passed through the Senate, but then we stopped it from passing through the House. And so it didn't become law. And, and this time around, um, I think, again, we can stop it from becoming law and the way to do that is to make sure that your members of Congress know, number one, this legislation is not about anti-Semitism. We need to fight anti-Semitism, but this legislation, right, really should be called the Silencing Students Act because it's trying to suppress advocacy for Palestinian rights on college campuses. Um, and you, our elected officials especially need to know that um, advocating for this legislation, putting their name on as a co-sponsor, if it comes to vote, voting for it, um, is really going against the First Amendment um, and doing something that would silent legitimate and constitutionally protected speech. And so what we found is that if we can get these messages across to our members of Congress, we can get them to stay away from co-sponsoring the legislation. And so they, they, they need to understand that. And we also have to put pressure on them. You know, it's, 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 not, it's, it's about education. It's not only about education, but they need to be hearing from us in mass, right? 
phone calls, emails, um, going into meetings with them. If they're appearing in public at a town hall, um, at an event, go talk to them, raise your hand, uh, make a statement about the legislation. Um, you know, and, and I would just say, I, I think we, we can keep both Republicans and Democrats away from this, um, but uh, met, not, not everyone in Congress, but many members in Congress actually care about the First Amendment. Uh, many Republicans right now are concerned about what they, what they view as politically correct speech codes. Um, and they think that students and professors are being censored. And so I think we can say to them, hey, you know, if that's your concern, do you want to help pass legislation that's going to silence students from speaking up and saying something that you might not agree with, but that, that they should be allowed to say? And, and Democrats, um, you know, need to know the ACLU is against this legislation um, and that if they were to support it, it would really go against their, con their constituency, um, their constituents who think that we have the right <laughs> to speak up, the right to protest, the right to think critically, the right to speak our mind, that that should be happening on college campuses. Um, and so if we can get that message across, it'll go a long way. Yeah, I just, I wanted to add that, you know, we know that this bill is about silencing one side of the debate about Israeli brutality against Palestinians, but even regardless of what your views are on Palestine, Israel, this bill is an attack on the free speech rights of everyone. And there's a lot of recognition of that. Like even the LA Times that editorialized against the bill and said, you know, the last thing we need is the federal government punishing students for voicing their political opinions. We already have a free speech crisis on campus. This is the last thing we need. And that has a broad appeal. I don't know if we find that in Congress, but regardless of Congress members, political views on Palestine, Israel, do you find that they that they're sensitive to those free speech concerns? I think many of them are, you know, I think, um, you know, th th there, there, there are other challenges we face outside of that, you know, with Congress, um, you know, and, and, and really any politician, they're gonna make a political calculation um, before they take an action. And we need to think about that political calculation. And so for some of them, they might actually know on some level that this is, that this is a violation of, of the First Amendment, and this is an attempt to suppress one side of, uh, of an important public debate. Um, but they might say, well, you know what, I'll gain points with, uh, with the, the right-wing evangelical Christian lobby that wants me to sign on to this, or I'll gain points with, um, with APAC, uh, or with the Anti-Defamation League who wants me to sign on this. So I don't really care this goes against my principles. I'll gain, I'll gain political points. It'll be useful for me. Um, and so, you know, we, we have to do two things. One, we have to get our message across, like we have to do the education, but we also have to think about what their calculation is and show them that there, that there, there will be a price if they want to do this, right? So that there are their constituents who will be upset with them for going after our, our, our constitutionally protected rights. That, 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 that is the exact opposite of what they should be doing as someone who's supposed to represent us. Um, so, so we need to be doing, I think, both those things simultaneously. That's right. Okay, so I um, want to remind everyone to oppose the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act or the Silencing Students Act and follow Ken Marcus. And Joseph, I don't know if you have more time, but as a rabbi and a lawyer, I'm not sure that we nailed the live on Facebook and I'm told that we may have not been live for the first 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> All right. One more time, if we, for those um, watching, if I still want to stay on and go back to cover who is Ken Marcus and his nomination, um, and his confirmation to lead the the um, office for civil rights of the Department of Ed. Do you have a few more minutes? To, yeah, let's do it. I think I think it's important. Time? People people okay. need to, people need to know who he is. Yep. All right, so we're going to do a little repeat. If you already heard the first section, you can move on now, or we're going to kind of roll through it again. But it's unscripted, so you might hear something new if you want to hear it twice. So. Okay, big uh, news last week, June 7th, the US Senate confirmed Kenneth Marcus, Trump's nominee to lead the Department of Education Office for Civil Rights. It was a party line vote. He was confirmed 50 to 46. He has no more credibility, if he ever had any, with the kind of typical civil rights advocate because he is not here to, lead, to advance all students' civil rights. He is part of the Trump agenda, and his main purpose is to silence criticism of Israel on campus. And we know this because of his well-documented record opposing civil rights protections for all students, pressuring universities to punish students who are vocal critics of Israeli policy, and advocating for what we were just talking about, this Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, the 
de defining, officially defining criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic. So we want to spend just a couple minutes describing who, more about Marcus's record and what the Department of Education Office for Civil Rights is and what that office does, what people should be ready for. So number one, the U.S. has a central anti-discrimination law. It's called the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And among lots of other things, it also prohibits discrimination based on race, race ethnicity, et cetera, in, uh, in schools, all schools that get federal funding. So that includes both public and private universities. And it has the power to deny federal funding to those schools if they're found to be discriminating. Now, Marcus is uh, the architect of a legal strategy um, to abuse civil rights law, to silence criticism of Israel. So his theory is that advocacy for Palestinian human rights is anti-Semitic and creates a hostile environment for Jewish students on campus and under the Civil Rights Act should be shut down. And he has spent years promoting this theory and asking um, uh, and demanding that filing complaints and demanding that universities shut down criticism of Israel, arguing that it's a violation of civil rights law. So we you ask a question. Yeah, well, I mean, I, it, so uh, just listening to you, to you talk. So basically he's now in a position where he can potentially threaten universities that he'll cut their, he'll cut their federal funding yeah. if they don't, silence students and he's right. for Palestinian yeah. rights because he says that that's that that's anti-semitic when we know it's not exactly and he spent years demanding that universities do this and his legal complaints have been rejected um resoundingly rejected and the obama department of education said no that's free speech and that's going to happen on a college campus that's normal um this is college but now Marcus is the decider. Um, he is the one who will determine whether all of these accusations um, are violations of civil rights law or not. Um, and there's a lot of examples of the kinds of things that Marcus has said are violations of civil rights law that he'll now have you know, the chance to punish schools for. Um, so there's this doc do uh, documentary on the Israeli occupation of Palestine called Occupation 101, Marcus alleged that showing that documentary is a violation of civil rights law. Uh, a, a lecture by a Holocaust survivor and a former Israeli soldier on campus, um, they were talking about you know, a, a lecture vocally critical of Israeli policy. Marcus said that lecture is anti-Semitic and violates civil rights law. Um, a, a black female student who's condemning white supremacy and said the statement F white supremacy uh, in the context of, you know, connecting white supremacy with Zionism. Uh, Marcus said that's anti-Semitic violation of civil rights law um, or street theater de depicting what a, a checkpoint in Palestine looks like, what an Israeli military checkpoint looks like. Marcus said that is a violation of civil rights law. So his, his theory and his record is of twisting and abusing civil rights law to silence speech critical of Israeli policy. And now he will be the decider. Mm. So what, do you, what, what, what's, what's our job gonna be over the next, over the next two, two years while he's in office? I mean, how, do, how are we gonna be able to push back and try to stop what he's doing? Yeah, thanks for taking me there. So his theory is absurd and wrong. And there are a lot of people on campus, students, professors, administrators, who know um, that the purpose of being at college is to debate, engage in ideas that make you uncomfortable, question, criticize, talk to each other, listen. Regardless of what people's views are in Palestine, Israel, there is a huge constituency who believe in free speech and critical debate. So our job now all of us is to mobilize with each other and across issues black students latinx students lgbtq students all of us who have who want to critique and engage in social movements and do it on campus as part of our education need to make this case together 
um, to basically bolster our defenses against the Federal Department of Education, who will be coming to attack our civil rights. So we've got our work cut out for us. We do, but we also have a very strong cause, and it's not just um, you know, our belief in Palestinian human rights, it's our belief in free speech. And that when we tell the truth, um, that you know, the, the truth is on our side and we can fight for our right to tell it. And there's a mm. lot of people who believe in our right to tell the truth. Mm. So we're gonna go from there. Mm. I wanna just um, close by asking everyone to stay tuned and keep following because we're gonna be fighting the so-called Anti-Semitism Awareness Act and fighting Marcus's agenda. So you can follow, I don't know if you've got JVP's social media stuff, Andy, but um, if everyone can stay tuned, uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, at Pal Legal, and our website is palestinelegal.org. And we're JVP Live on Twitter, uh, and I, I'm, just, I'm so grateful to be here with you today, Liz, and I'm, I'm so grateful for the work that you do um, every single day and for the work of Palestine Legal to to just stand up for our rights and to stand up for students' rights. And i um, so grateful that, that, that you guys are doing what, you, what you're doing. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye everyone.